This is the talk of Music City Real Estate. Super Talk 99.7 WT and the talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. Monty Moore here with Realty One Group Music City. Hey, and Carrie Ann with CMD Financial and my mortgage team. And welcome back. It's Sunday evening. Happy Sunday evening, Carrie Ann. Happy Sunday I'm evening to you. I'm looking forward to tonight's uh, session, this episode. What do we call these? Is it an episode? Is that what it is? I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it because we've got one of my favorite people on the planet with us today. Yes. Before we introduce this man. Special guest. I want to remind everybody that this show is dependent upon your questions so please send those real estate related questions or mortgage related questions to questions at talkmusiccity.com or hashtag music city yes and this show is also a podcast so you can listen at your leisure we're on itunes stitcher google music and others you can also watch us on youtube or our favorite facebook simply search the talk of music city cariana referred to to uh, us introducing one of my favorite people on the planet this man actually in all sincerity, folks, this man challenges me to better be a better man just because he is such a solid individual. I mean, to hear yes. his story, I cannot wait. Tom Henry of Feed America First, great to see you, sir. What a pleasure to be here again with you, too. I, I enjoy these moments, and and you got to quit saying that, that I'm making you a better man, because at some point, somebody's going to hold me accountable for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's ever going to blame you for me, but, but, but I promise you, you do challenge me because you've got such an amazing heart, brother, and I mean that's with all my heart, that you... When I first got to meet, what's what's it been about four or five years now that we've yeah, been known each other? Years, yeah. Um, soon as we, as soon as I was at that that function uh, called the, the Dancing with the Nashville Stars, that uh, that our friend uh, from uh, M Street, remember him? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He invited us to Connie and I, and heard your story. You got up in front of that night and shared your your vision and your story, and we heard what you've done for so many people. How, how could I? How could it? Any listener not love you in an amazing way. So thank you again for for sharing tonight. And uh, we're going to talk a little later about, uh, first of all, we're going to talk about your story. Because I believe that before people can believe the messenger, uh, before the message, they believe the message, they first must believe the messenger. And you've got a great story. It does. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. And then I want to share a, a little bit about the uh, the amazing dancer sitting next to you. Oh, I'd love to talk about, about that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming from oh. a seasoned veteran, a guy who mastered the... Uh, the white leisure suit. That's, that's, that's very high praise. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever there see? There aren't many Tony Manolos in the world. <laughs> well, you know, I, I bought a ticket. I think I even bought a table. Yeah, and yeah, you did. You um, I think table. I was um, sick that evening. Mm-hmm. So but so I had to see it uh, from Facebook well, and um, through all the pictures. Now you get to see it up front. front and close oh, and yes. <laughs> very close. You'll see it very closely. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, we're gonna, we'll talk about that. But Tom, tell us about how did Feed America First get started? You know, you're... You're doing such amazing things for thousands of, of families now on a monthly basis. Can you tell us how it all got started? Well, it was a pretty modest beginning. I was uh, I, I had been in the restaurant business for thirty years, and and uh, as I was approaching fifty, I felt like my career in the restaurant world was winding down. At the same time, we were doing a Bible study at at, at my church, Bethlehem United Methodist in Franklin, a book called Halftime, and uh, this man was exploring the difference between success and significance. And uh, it resonated with me because I felt like I'd been relatively successful. I had three kids in college. My home was paid for. And, and yet, I, I felt like there was just a, a big gap on the significant side. So so I started volunteering my time. I'd never done that before. I'd been involved with a lot of charities and hosted events and written checks. But, but I'd never really committed any time. So I decided that uh, the most comfortable thing for me to do would do, be to do something concerning food. So I went down and started, I uh, just walked up to the Feed the Children building and offered my services. And, and uh, that quickly became the most important day of the week for me as I, as I started learning the dimensions of hunger and, and how food was distributed and where it came from and, and how it was given out. I found that there was a, there was a gap. There was... There were there was so much support going to the metropolitan areas where there's a high density population of people in need, but there's still 45 percent of the people who need food help that don't live in cities. And I felt like what I could do is to to complement the work that was already being done was to concentrate on rural and small towns where where the help's a little harder to get, where, where it costs more to get the food there. Right. Um, and when, when we, I, I met a like-minded man at, uh, at Feed the Children. He was their executive director for, for a year. And uh, we started talking about that, about what it would take logistically to get food there. That was his background. My background was running restaurants. His was in warehousing and transportation. So, so we started talking about what we could do. And, 
in visiting these little towns, we found that every little town had people there that were doing the work. They, they were feeding their neighbors. Oftentimes, there was somebody who walked a mile in those shoes. They'd been wow. hungry or they'd been homeless or they'd, uh, they'd had a substance abuse problem. And because of the help they got from their neighbors, they decided that they wanted to give back. And so there's this core of selfless, humble people who are, who are feeding their neighbors. And we didn't see any reason at all we would want to interrupt that. What we wanted to do was, was amplify their effectiveness by giving them more food. If, if they're already engaged, they know their neighbors, they know whose stories are legitimate, they, they, they've lived the heartache, and they get to provide hope in that community. And, and so we felt like if we could fuel them, if we could get them food, then, then they could have a bigger impact. Mm-hmm. Our, our, we're just so committed to the fact that, that hunger is a community problem and it's neighbors taking care of, of neighbors. And so... If we can equip those neighbors with the means to, to do that, then, then we're strengthening that community. It's not just helping one person or one family. We're helping strengthen that community. And, and so that's the, that's the driving force behind what we're trying to do. Based on the numbers, it sounds like you're doing an amazing job now. But let's fast forward to what's happening now. Well, we uh, uh, <laughs> we had our best year ever last year, and we're thirty five percent ahead this year. I mean, we're moving millions and millions of pounds of food. We're impacting uh, about thirty five to forty thousand families a month, and uh, wow. that's that's in a, a radius of about one hundred and fifty to two hundred miles from around Middle Tennessee and wow. in, the, in the Southern Kentucky, and Northern Mississippi. What, what a, what a Alabama. huge undertaking to affect that many lives. Well, we we don't look at it. it, it it's somewhat frightening and awe-inspiring to me to think about the scale of those numbers when when I think about think about how we started and what we actually do and what we do is pretty humble work I mean we're driving trucks and and uh, uh, working out of a warehouse and, and visiting these little towns to help give food away we're working with with hundreds and hundreds of volunteers a month trying to engage them in in helping their neighbors and and uh, uh, Giving away, the, the better we are at giving it away, the more there's, the more God's provided. And, and uh, we've gotten pretty good at giving it away, so he's burying us this year. <laughs> a problem to have, I guess. But yeah, yeah. The systems I that, the challenge. The systems that you guys have put in place, to, it's so effective. I remember the last time I was at your warehouse, you had, and there was a whole caravan of vehicles that had come in from those little communities you talked about. Yeah. And, were, and, were, and there was a bunch of, what I loved seeing is you had put a bunch of kids, I guess, from a school that had were participating in that and seeing, you know, how they could be instrumental in helping as well. What, what, a, what a blessing that was to see that in action. Well, and I get great joy out of that because that's how you train neighbors to help neighbors. It's those volunteers coming out figuring, because when you think about hunger, you think about it on a global level, it's an intractable problem. What could one person do about that? But having a group of school kids show up and spend a couple of hours giggling and playing with each other and, and filling bags with food and helping load it into vehicles and having, having these humble people saying thank you for it, that changes lives. That, that, they leave there with a different idea of the impact that they can have on the world. That, right. that what you can do, if, if you think hunger is a problem in your neighborhood, you can go feed somebody. And uh, uh, if you don't know exactly how, come see us. And we'll, we'll tell you how. We'll show you how. We'll give you the food to do it. And what you've uh, what you've uncovered is that the problem is way bigger than what anybody realized, because a lot of people, because of their own pride and so forth, don't let people know that they're really hungry. Well, that's it. Hunger's <clears throat> hunger's an invisible enemy, mm. and and that really came to the front of my mind not too long ago when when a good friend of mine. I live in I live in Franklin. We live in a upper middle class community I guess and, and uh, we're, there's not a lot of poverty around the part of Franklin I live in there's not a lot of poverty in Franklin but, but uh, uh, one of the teachers from the middle school where my granddaughter goes had heard about what I did and she came to me and said I've got some kids here at school that we're not sure they eat over the weekends is there anything you can do mm-hmm. and I was thinking in Grassland Middle School there's, there's people that don't have food and uh, it's, it's not that you have to go back in the sticks to find people it's, it's People who've had a medical emergency, people who've had uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, mm-hmm. financial setback where, where they're just having a hard time making the ends meet. And, and one of the truths about it is when you have to make those hard choices between uh, paying, your, paying your mortgage and paying for medicine and keeping the lights on and keeping, keeping your family warm, sometimes food is the last thing that you choose. That's the thing mm-hmm. that you think you can, you can cut out. And the, the insidious part about that kind of decision making is that 
if you affect the children, if, if kids go to school hungry, they're handicapped. They're not going to learn at the same rate because they're distracted. And uh, I, it's, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Mm. Well, Tom, you know, you've, uh, some of our listeners probably have maybe heard about the amazing numbers that you can literally, um, <laughs> literally multiply the fishes, basically. So, but it's hard to maybe understand from the outside, how do you take a hundred dollars and create a thousand meals, a thousand to fifteen hundred meals? How does that work? Well, all of our food is donated. Out of the thirty six million pounds of, a million dollars worth of food we gave away last year, we bought about twelve thousand dollars. So so virtually all of it is donated by manufacturers and distributors. They they all put sell by dates on their product, and when their product gets close to that sell by date, if they give it away before the sell by date, there's some positive tax consequences to it. And and every company wants to do that; they want to be sure. do well in business by being good in the community. Mm. And so, when a manufacturer or distributor wants to give away food, they want to give it away in a large quantity. They don't want to fill somebody's pickup truck; they want to fill a 53 foot tractor trailer. And there aren't that many charities that can do that; that can accept that much. Well, we've set up our system so that we can. And uh, uh, so when they when they call me and say they have three tractor trailers of yogurt, I'm the one they can call and and we'll go pick it up the next day. Wow! Wow! Amazing! Wow! You know, <laughs> all I can say when I'm when I'm hear these numbers and so forth is wow! It's just amazing that you put be able to put a spotlight on this kind of a need, and then orchestrated such an, a beautiful way, an amazing way of taking care of all these folks. One of the great advantages of starting out with no knowledge and no money is that you ask a lot of questions, you learn a lot of things that you didn't know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Tom, we want to continue this conversation. It's just a it it touches me in a way um, because you just don't realize you know what's right around the corner you know people that are hungry and when you speak of kids you know it just makes me want to want to make a difference so thank you so much for tuning in tonight we're going to be talking all things feed america first we have tom henry here in the studio with us you've been listening to the talk of music city real estate hi my name is monty moore i'm the broker owner of realty one group music city I've been an active real estate broker for over 35 years now, personally selling thousands of homes. That's why I recently opened Tennessee's first Realty One Group office. As a real estate professional, would you like having it all? Cutting edge technology, full support, world-class training, same day commission deposits, all for free. How about strong collaborative culture, national brand recognition, new high exposure, easy access office, and a non-competing broker committed to your success seven days a week? Now let's top that off with all experienced agents receiving 100% of their commission from day one. I know, where's the catch, right? There is no catch. Call us today and schedule a confidential meeting and learn why Realty One Group is the fastest growing real estate franchise in the nation. Call 636-8244, that's 615-636-8244, or go to topagentsuccess.com, that's topagentsuccess.com. Super Talk 99.7 WTN, the talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. Monty Moore here with Realty One Group Music City. Hey, and Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and my mortgage team. And Carrie Ann, we are here Sunday night with one of my favorite people on the planet, the founder of Feed America First, Mr. Tom Henry. Tom, it's so awesome. Anytime I get to talk with you, brother, it's, so, it's such a pleasure to hear the things that you, that, that uh, this this ministry, How I mean, what, first of all, do you call it a ministry? What do you call this? I go by many names, but uh, I call it a ministry. It is to me. I mean, it is a ministry. Yeah. I, I, it's not a, I mean, it's more than a service. It's more than so many things. You're not a food bank. You are a, you're a ministry. Well, we're incorporated. We're a secular organization, but it's driven by faith. Right. No, I, that's where it was born as well, I'm yeah. understanding. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about the uh, how, much, how many meals you can create by $100 creates 1,000 to, to twelve to 1,500 meals. The money that we're we're asking the viewers to watch or to send in, I'm sorry, the viewers to send in. Uh, talk talk to us about your other expenses. Sure, sure. To uh, to distribute that thirty six million dollars worth of food last year, uh, our budget was about uh, about about eight hundred thousand dollars. So for that eight hundred thousand dollars, that includes about half of that is the labor for my staff of uh, uh, nine and and then the uh, 
fuel, equipment, maintenance, uh, what it takes to operate our warehouse. Overall, uh, our overhead last year was 2.1% of gross revenue. So we are we pride ourselves on being extremely I'm sorry, efficient. Can we talk about that again? 2.1% is what you yeah. operate this yeah. amazing organization off of. So wow. It's less than 3%. Well, we're we're of proud of that revenue. number. We're proud of being good stewards. Uh, you've been to our warehouse. It's it's uh, it's it's a no frills operation, and that's the way that's the way I designed it, and that's the way it needs to be. Uh, we want to be good stewards with every single dollar. There's a lot of ways to spend your money, and there's there's. Uh, a thousand other agencies just in Middle Tennessee that uh, that that would like to would like to have, to have you put something in their hands too. But but I think we need to we just need to be efficient with it. We need to consider this part of God's service, and so we need to be good at it. Mm-hmm. I just think it's incredible when we're living in a time where sometimes it's it's you know you're 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 wanting to give to a cause a worthy cause, but you're hesitant because you're not sure. How that split up, you know, does it really reach the end user? And to know that, in your case, over ninety-seven percent does reach the the people in in the in, that are in need. Uh, uh, it's just awesome. It's just incredible. And for those people who are who are concerned and who want to know more, GivingMatters.com is run by the Community Foundation, and and we're we every year we post all of our figures there. So if somebody wants to do deep research on Feed America First and don't want to take my word for it, then they're certainly welcome to go to GivingMatters.com and and look us up. Thank you for that. You know, Carrie Ann, I don't know about you, but I find myself, you know, you know, find myself in the same situation. The last time we had this man on is like, it's just, it's awe inspiring to think somebody has dedicated 20 years of their life to helping those in need Mm -hmm. here. Just amazing. And so many stories we talked about last time, you know, just of how you were able to make a difference, you know, speaking about, you know, going to the rural areas, you know, we live in the middle Tennessee, that this is the strip, right, we live in, but Tennessee is such a large state, you know, and there are so many pockets of people um, that are of need, you know, and you speak of the children um, and you speak of Kentucky and Mississippi, so, I mean, you you just, you know, to know that you're a Tennessee-based organization, um, but you're actually, you know, stretching out to to the different states to uh, to make a difference is is huge. So you're right. You're located right here in Murfreesboro, right? Yeah, yeah. We work out of Murfreesboro, and and uh, but we distribute food in in six other places. We go to uh, uh, we go to Cookville and Clarksville, and and to besides Murfreesboro, we go down to uh, Morris Chapel, Tennessee, which is just outside of Adamsville, and uh, we go down in Alabama to Irondale and and to Madison. Uh, the areas we're talking about. This is an agricultural state, and and the states adjoining us are agricultural states. And and uh, farm life's tough, and, mm-hmm. and small towns are tough. The uh, when the economy crashed back in uh, 2008, 2009, a lot of factories, a lot of a lot of employers in small towns left, and uh, it left a population that. Uh, uh, that couldn't couldn't thrive, and so the able-bodied people moved away, which leaves small towns populated with a disproportionate number of of seniors and the infirm and single moms. And uh, the quickest path to poverty in the United States is to be a single mom. So, in those communities, there's a certain amount of chronic hunger, but uh, but most of the hunger in America is acute, and that's one of the things that. Uh, that we know that probably 60% of the people who are getting help are only going to need it for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. And, and then they're going to be able to work themselves out of it. And and oftentimes they come back and want to volunteer because we help them when they need it if they want to help somebody else when they need it. That's awesome. Yeah, amazing. So, you might have something to say. Well, I was, I was going to say, so I understand that we have Feed America First's biggest event coming up as far as a fundraiser uh, called Dancing with the Nashville Stars. Uh, yours truly got the privilege of uh, being involved in that. You were marvelous. <clears throat> yes, I was marvelous. All right, I still have that white leisure suit. <clears throat> oh, who would want? It? <laughs> <laughs> well, my thing is, who would fit into it? Is my this, well, those well, pant legs? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah that's well, you know what? What people don't know is, I actually had to buy two suits. It wasn't because of my massive chest. <laughs> <It's> your long <laughs> legs. <laughs> I had to actually cut. You know, like two and a half, and two feet off of the bottom of one pair of pants, and and then and then so, sew them on oh the bottom gosh. pair. Well, I mean, yeah, we're leisure leisure seats created for a six five individual. Oh my god, funny, yeah. too funny. So, I love that. But anyway, that was um, a good story. That would have gotten a few more dollars. If they knew that a couple years ago. You know, people didn't realize how how much of a uh, how much of a sacrifice I made. That's I right. It. That's right. <laughs> And then we had Mr. Ralph Bristol was one of the judges. Do you remember how mean he was to me? He was uh, 
Yeah. He was brutal. <laughs> he says, you call that dancing, Monty? <laughs> I said, no, I didn't really call it yeah. dancing, but you yeah. could have not said that. Yeah, that would have been nice. You got a full dose of curmudgeon there. <laughs> I couldn't believe you, it. You had a few arm moves? Is that what you got out there? You know, oh, the pointing to the front. Was, the point to the top. I was, I was, I, people thought I was John Travolta for a few seconds there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not really. I love it. I love Not it. Really. Too funny. But we have this coming up, though, and I'm so grateful that there happens to be one of the dancers in the studio today with us. Oh, we're so excited about Carrie Ann's help in, the, in this this event, even though you and I kind of drafted her last time I was here. But uh, but she's been a good sport, and she's going to do. She's going to knock it out. Oh, of the park. she is. She's going to. We be know everybody. Amazing. It's November fifth, and the time it starts. What time? Six o'clock at the factory in Franklin. Oh, okay. right. So November fifth. Put that on your calendar. It's an amazing event. But I'm more curious. Like, how did you come up with this? How many years have you been doing Dancing with the Nashville Stars? I believe this is our ninth. Ninth. Um, we wow. were we were sitting around me and my curmudgeon board members uh, trying to decide another fundraiser. We had just added uh, two new women joined our board. Yeah. And we were talking about new fundraisers and they said, we ought to do something with Dancing with the Stars. And and, and my development director said, well, I saw somebody in Selmer, Tennessee do something like that. We could call them and find out how to do it. And so and so the three of them are all excited and talking about it. And, and my buddies and I are looking at each other and going, nah. So, we, <laughs> But they were excited. So we decided that uh, we would we would test it for a month. We'd start talking to people about it and, and sure. see what they thought. And everybody was just so excited about it. Yeah. And so we were very fortunate in putting it on at the right place and, and at the right time of the year. We wanted to be at the front of the giving season, the holiday sure, giving season. Sure. So we wanted to be in early November and the Franklin and the factory in Franklin is just such a great venue. So um, we, <laughs> we we got real lucky in staging it all the first time and, and uh, it has it has been phenomenal. Wonderful. Well, you know, th- we've been there three times before Connie and I, and and I got to say, it's an amazing evening, folks. So, it, so those who are listening, you want to have a great evening out. It's it's November fifth uh, at again six o'clock. Six o'clock at the, at the factory. At the factory. Frankly. You need to go online. And we'll we'll talk about how how we make votes, how we uh, how we vote. Yeah, here. yeah, absolutely. So, but we'll we'll give you the site to go. But you know, I took on the challenge uh, when the two of you, I won't say ganged up on me. <laughs> <laughs> like you can be bullied. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, it's so funny, you know, I'm a, I'm someone who will go to any wedding and dance every dance. So I was like, dancing? This seems easy, right? Well, woo! It's a lot harder. <laughs> they make it look easy on that show, they you do. know? I mean, do. it it does, um, it looks a lot easier, but um, I've been able to connect with some amazing professionals over at NDC, National Dance Club, um, here in Brentwood, and I've got an amazing partner. His name is Jake, and, um, you know, it's so funny, we're, there's, how many celebrities or business celebrities participating? Six. We have six dancers. Six, right. So, we all come from different professions, uh, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I live a very strong stressful um, work life. So Jake has got a lot to handle when he when he when I get to the studio there because I've had a long day and then all of a sudden he wants me to get into the walls and one, two, three, and two, two, three. <laughs> when I've been running, you know, mm-hmm. at a 20 pace uh, count. So and I can't say funny. enough about National Dance Clubs. They've been our partner each year and oh, they, they yeah. donate their time and their pros to do this event. Great, great stuff. Hey, so thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we're going to talk more about how you can help us raise money here for Feed America First and Dancing with the Nashville Stars. You've been listening to the talk of Music City Real Estate. Are you someone who is looking to gain wealth through real estate? My name is Carrie Ann Sear, and I'm with CMG Financial and my mortgage team. Whether you're looking to purchase your first home, a second home, or even an investment property, my team and I, we specialize in making the process of home ownership smooth as possible. With our vast variety of mortgage programs, our competitive interest rates, and our local support center, we have the ability to serve so many deserving families and help find just the right mortgage program to fit within your short and long-term financial goals. Mortgage loans is what we know and approving them is what we do. We'd be honored to help you begin the process today. Check us out at yourtnlendingsolution.com. That's yourtnlendingsolution.com. Or give us a call, always a friendly voice, 615-456-4456. That's 456-4456. We look forward to helping you and beginning your mortgage application today. 
Super Talk 99.7 WTN, the talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. This is Monty Moore with Realty One Group Music City. Hi, and Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and my mortgage team. And we're having a fun time here with Mr. Tom Henry of, of Feed America First, talking about this coming event on November 5th at the factory. Everybody wants to make sure they're a part of this organiz- this uh, effort because it's very, very fun. We're, our company is going to be... Uh, uh, chauffeuring that, uh, not chauffeuring, but ushering, ushering, not chauffeuring, ushering. <laughs> You're gonna pick me up. <laughs> yeah, we'll pick you up. <laughs> you know, I gotta tell you, Carrie Ann, when I, when I, um, you know, Eric Martino is one that asked me to to. Um, uh, do what you're doing this year. Yeah. And uh, I, I love Eric. He's an amazing guy. He was uh, part of uh, corporate with uh, M Street when he was here. And um, and I love Eric, I guess is why I said okay, because I didn't know what I was getting into, you know. But uh, but anyway, so I, I, I made one request. That's all. I, I Just one request. And that is, okay, give me, I'm six foot six. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I'm pretty tall. Well, I and cut I, you down an, an inch. <laughs> and Shoot. I said, look, I, I need a tall dancer. Right. Okay, so... <laughs> Bring me, bring me a tall dancer. So I get to the dance studio on my first lesson, and who should show up? But this little tiny girl, like four foot nine or four no. foot eleven or something like that, and uh, Miss Kara, who's one of my agents now. But anyway, I said, I said, I asked for a tall person. <laughs> so she goes, she what she was going to do is she was going to get on her knees and come around the corner with like she was on her knees, you know, looking yeah. like she was like really, really a little person. Yeah. And she didn't do that, but but anyhow, after doing some of the things that you're learning how to do, I realized why I was really grateful that she was as small as she is. Yes, I'm, and you know, yes, you know, we're grateful that you had the the, the the male side of this duo. Let me tell you, let's but, talk about the bruise from the the knee to the hip. Here. Such how did you get that? It gives, it gives give me such a compassion for what you're what you're doing now, but. Look how much more value you, well, you'll be on the planet. Well, you know, it's when I was saying, you know, going to a wedding. I love weddings and I love to dance. And my dad taught me all these dances, you know, and uh, we have the Christmas parties. I'm the one getting everybody to dance. This should be easy, right? right? I mean, this should be easy. But there is some posture mm-hmm. and there is, you know, how you hold your hands, how you hold, you know, your feet, how you walk. You know, um, and so I show up, right? The guy, <laughs> this is kind of funny. So he's in a three-piece suit here, okay? I'm just mm-hmm. looking at him and I'm sweating. So I'm in my T-shirt <laughs> and my yoga pants and my sneakers, you know, which has got some good soles on them. And I'm like, I'm ready. Let's do this. Show me what you got. Let's do this. I, I've been dancing for years. This shouldn't be hard, right? Show me what you got. So he goes into these moves and he's trying to slow me down because my personality is go, go, go. Like mm-hmm. I don't slow Let's get it over down. It. I mean, I might slow down by 4 p.m. on a Sunday, you mm-hmm. know, like because it's I'm go so fast during the week. So he's like, and we're going to start and learn to walk. <laughs> and step one, step two. So it was so funny. I was like, oh, okay, this is how this is going to work. So we're going to break it down. So then he said, hey, so these shoes you're wearing, yeah, you're going to need to change that. You need some dance shoes. And I'm like, I'm sorry? <laughs> what is that? What are we talking about? <laughs> and you have this this variety, right? He shows me these shoes. And I'm like, okay, you want those on my feet? I mean, no disrespect, but yeah, those aren't going on my feet over there, you know, because they're like ugly, ugly, <laughs> ugly, ugly. I was like, what are we working here, right? And I was like, so, and again, the, the ladies out there will appreciate, like there's dancers that this is their profession. I sell mortgages. I'm a mom. I sit in a seat. I wear Spanx. This is my life. I am not a dancer. Like, I'm not going to, like, let it all hang out type of thing. Like, these ladies got it going on. It's great. I love that, right? So, they go, you need the open toe shoe. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. Let, well, open toe shoe? What, what are we talking about? Let me explain something to you. I was expecting, like, a thick tight going all the way up, you know, closed toe, right? Because they're like, ladies, they don't wear the tights. I was like, oh, no, this mama's wearing tights. Like, we're going all the way up to the top. I'm not like... I was so funny. So they they figured out who I was real fast, you know. And so you I mean did your personality. You my mean. personality, okay. yes, and um, that I was going to wear tights, and we <laughs> made that clear. And so I went on Amazon that evening and bought myself a pair of dance shoes. So hilarious! I then put these dance shoes on. And I guess I didn't know what I was doing to tighten them. I just thought you just hooked them once. And I was like, oh, these are a little loosey-goosey here. Like, I guess that's how they do it. <laughs> My, fe- I could not walk literally for three <laughs> hours after. <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. I was like, we're only in the second rehearsal. How am I going to do this? I was like, how is this? I wear four-inch heels dancing. Like, I can do this. Right, right. What is wrong with this? Right. Well, come to find out I had them on wrong the entire time. <laughs> right. I mean, clearly I had them on wrong. So now we got them a little, you know, 
tightened up and it makes sense. But trying to put them on is hilarious. There's a video of me trying to put them on and I couldn't, you know, get them on really smoothly. But we're going to figure this out. And then I'm just inspired because at NDC, they have so many amazing professional dancers there that are mm-hmm. instructors and teachers and they teach from all ages. I mm-hmm. mean, I've been introduced from people in their 70s to their 20s, you know, men and women, um, and they're learning all kinds of dances. It's incredible. You know? it's, a, it's a great sport. I wish we had more. I, I wish Connie and I had more time for it because I just think yeah. it's an amazing thing. Foxtrot, the tango, mm-hmm. the rumba. Mm-hmm. What else am I learning? It's Ooh, the swing. It's yeah. empowering as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And But it is a lot of work. So, you know me, go big or go home. So, I challenged the gentlemen and I gave them a the couple songs and I've figured out what air they grew up in because they didn't know what songs or the singers <laughs> I was sharing with them. <laughs> so, I'm like, you know, Donna Summer, you know, remember her? <laughs> I served her here because she lived here local, right? So I wanted to do a Donna Summer song. And they're like, oh, I don't know that song. Last Dance. That, I was like, that's a good song. <laughs> so it's funny. So I was like, okay, this is what we're working with. So why don't, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some, I need, I need a, a two-songer. I need a costume change. I need to show my personality. I need some theatricals. You know, I need it all. Can you make that happen here? How quickly can you make that happen? <laughs> so they did. I wonder where Aubrey, I'm sorry. Well, I wonder where Aubrey gets her, her, her theatrical self. I just can't figure this out right oh now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, my kid. She's so funny. <laughs> How old she, is she? Six? She is sick. This going is, on, this, yeah, you know, going she's straight a min, to Hollywood. Mini Carrie Ann. She she's is gonna so be funny. very proud of you. Sorry she's for the so side funny. note there, but I, I saw Aubrey right there. You know? Yeah, and I said I'm a mom, so I would like to have some sort of mom part, but I'm also I got a lot of personality. You know, I like to show off my personality, and so they looked at each other uh, because there's a choreographer with mm-hmm. the dance partner, right? And so um, I came back a week later, and they had everything rolled out, and then I go, "What did I sign myself up for?" <laughs> like then you have to do it. Now I have to physically do it, right? right. Right. So now we're two and a half weeks into training two times for at least two to three hours a time. Mm-hmm. And I've made it into 50 seconds of the three minutes. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get there. And I'm a fourth quarter gal and I get right. it. I'll right. completely. But it is like they are saying, you know, be dainty. You got to slow down, Carrie. And this is this is the waltz, you know, or there's an individual part I'm doing. And you have to like be dainty, be girly, <laughs> be the hand move. You know that hand move. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm like what? You know, I'm so I realized I wasn't as dainty as I thought I was. But hey, what are you to do? But it's going to be. It's for an amazing cause. That's what I keep saying to myself. And um, I will work hard, and I will make sure it's amazing. So a, it could be a comedy show. B, <laughs> you could be like, wow. You know, this girl's got it going on. I don't know. But it's going to be an amazing show. And, the good and news is it'll be worthwhile, though, to see. It's you definitely do not want to miss it, it folks. Yes. You do not want to miss this And I have, because I like a little surprise. There's some surprises in the midst of it yeah, all, too. So, so nice. we love we love surprises. But, you know, again, it is for a great cause. And I love being creative and um, always train on, you know, create curiosity and turn heads. Well, this is definitely going to create some curiosity <laughs> and turn some heads. <laughs> So it's going to be for for a good cause. So, yes. so, so Tom, I know your goal each year has been to provide a million meals from this experience. Wow! Right? I think with the our expectation this year is that we're going to be able to do about one and a quarter million meals from the from the I results was going to put of the this million, event. A million on Carrie Ann. Let her do well, that. Well, she part. may. Okay. She may. She could pack the house. She'll have her own <laughs> cheering section there. We just got all the inside baseball we needed on it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll definitely work hard. You know, to I needed to make sure I could figure this dancing thing out before I got everybody invited. But no, we're going to get go that. Ahead and, bu- and assume that. Just, just jump in the deep end and the figure clothes, the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. assume the clothes. But we'll do that. Well, one of the things I love about this event. I feel a little hypocritical about it because we work in a warehouse, and uh, so we're in this fabulous ballroom. It's it's lit, the ambiance, the food, the costumes is all is all so beautiful. But the bottom line is, we need to feed more people. Sure. And and so in this elegant circumstance, we love the fact that that so many people come out, and and a lot of them will be people that we don't know. Typically, about forty percent of the people there know who we are before they get there, and the rest of them are are there because you asked them, or right. the other dancers asked them. So it's a wonderful opportunity for me to get up and tell our story in front of. Uh, uh, there'll be a total of about five hundred people there. I think we're going to be sold out by in a couple of weeks. I think. Uh, so we're going to have a chance to talk to about five hundred people, and about three of them won't have heard our story before we uh, 
before we uh, get there. So I, I'm just very excited about that opportunity and about about your efforts in trying to uh, in trying to do that, trying to bring those people to us and and uh, uh, show them that they can have an impact on rural and small town hunger in, mm-hmm. in Middle Tennessee. Yeah, and we don't want to lose, you know, the the point of the of the dance, you know, and really bring the the, the focus back, the laser focus of what you do each and every day, you know. Terry, back to I, that. I really applaud you for embracing this opportunity. I really, I truly do. do. I Honestly, do. it's this a big is, challenge. This is a big, big deal, folks. I mean, until you walk the, in these shoes, uh, literally and figuratively, you don't realize how big a deal it is. This is the Feed America First biggest fundraising experience for the year, and there's. Thousands of people, thousands of people counting on you doing a good job. I don't want to put any pressure. He's, he's no kind of mounting that pressure up, isn't he? No <laughs> pressure there, Ronnie. Well, you know, we... But also, and I, you'll feel this as you, as you continue on. You're going to feel like... I mean, you don't want to let Aubrey down, if anybody else, but you're not going to let let uh, all those folks that are going to be there that night at, uh, at the, at, uh, the uh, Franklin... Uh, you know, we yeah, and it, we have a lot of folks that follow us on social media, and I've started videotaping each little you know episode of when I um, go to NDC and just kind of get a little bit of an insight on the back, you know, behind the scenes, you know, what it, what um, you go through. But I was always laughing. I just, just this was something I was telling you guys. I didn't understand why there was this huge mint jar right there until you realize that you're not <laughs> dancing by yourself. You are dancing with a partner who unless you're in, yeah, exactly because he's six six. But this individual is the same height as me, you know, 5'5", five, five, we'll give him 5'6", right? 5'7", okay. we'll go there. So, but again, he is face to face, like in my face, right? I was like, oh, hey, great to meet you. How's it going? <laughs> uh, hopefully my, yeah, so I was laughing. I said, you know, you can never have bad breath in this sport. So always, you know, always have your men. So, so we're having a lot of fun tonight with our friend Tom Henry here with Feed America First. So thank you so much uh, for participating and, and just being part of our show. We're so grateful and so um, thankful for you to be here tonight. Please uh, stay tuned with us. Uh, we're just going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk more about what you can do to make a difference with Feed America First. You've been listening to the talk of music. Music City Real Estate. Super Talk 99.7 WTN, the talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. Monty Moore here with Realty One Group Music City. Hey, and Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and My Mortgage Team. I don't know about you, Carrie Ann, but I am having a good time tonight with Mr. Tom Henry, the uh, founder of Feed America First, because we know we're going to be making a difference in people's yes, lives. Absolutely. And that's really what yes. it's all about. That's why we're on the planet, guys, is to make a difference in others' lives. And I don't know how to more effectively to do that. Certainly one of the most effectively... Uh, effective ways to do that is to feed people. Absolutely. Uh, people in need. I can't imagine, you know, for, uh, I, when I hear about the elderly, we've talked about it's a little bit about you know, the young folks that are going to bed are uh, hungry, but when you think about the elderly, not sure if they can buy medication or buy food or pay their rent, Tom, it must just break your heart. Can you share a, can you share a story with us? Yeah, maybe? I'd like to tell you the story about Aubrey Lynn. Um, Aubrey Lynn was, uh, it was on her fourth birthday and her grandmother who gets $15 a month in food stamps, had come to pick up food. And uh, that particular day, uh, she, she was very sad about, the grandmother was very sad that she didn't have anything for Aubrey Lynn for her birthday. And uh, that particular day, we had uh, gotten a bunch of birthday cakes. And we had these really elaborate birthday cakes that came from, from a bakery. And uh, uh, I pulled the grandmother aside and, and, and said, Aubrey Lynn needs a birthday cake. You pick one out, and then we'll sing happy birthday. What are the odds of, of you getting a birthday cake that day? That is, that's, yeah. that's amazing. We're used to things like that. We're used to the unexpected. Uh, I believe that, that little miracles happen all the time, yeah. and, wow. and uh, uh, we get to witness a lot of them. But, uh, but Aubrey Lynn, that made her day, and we all got to sing happy birthday, and, and uh, I think it made a very special birthday for her. But, but I was thinking about the grandmother, about the, about the, the challenges. There's so many grandparents raising children, and... Uh, Whatever they've paid in in Social Security, they're not getting it back. I mean, they're not getting back uh, uh, very much money. Um, and to think about having to having to go back and re-raise kids when you're when you're in your sixties or seventies or eighties is is a is a real challenge. And, and it's not an uncommon thing. No, uh, many of us have have uh, have those challenges. But uh, I'm I'm glad that we're able to help because. What's what's a grandmother going to do? I mean, she can't go get a job, but she's still got to feed her kids. Mm-hmm. I have a uh, one, one of the guys who works for me. His uh, his name is Mark. He's a, he's a farmer. He's from a farm family and lives in lives in Woodbury. And uh, uh, he 
like all farmers, knows all of his neighbors and because they, they share challenges, right. share chores. When, when things come up, they share equipment. And so he felt like he knew all his neighbors. And then his, his daughter came home from the first grade, the first day of the first grade, and said, Dad, there's a kid that doesn't have any food. And uh, so so Mark and his, his daughter, Ellie, uh, got some food together out of their pant- pantry and sneaked over to this kid's house mm. and put food on the front porch. They didn't want him to know about it. Yeah. And uh, the next day, the boy was talking about it. He was all excited, and he had food for lunch. And, and, uh, and so Ellie liked it so much that she the next weekend, she said, Dad, let's go give food away. And so starting then, they started giving food away. She's 16 now. They still go out on weekends and give food wow. away. Wow. And uh, uh, Mark was so uh, so concerned about the fact that there was that kind of hunger going on in their community in, in uh, Woodbury mm-hmm. that he started paying attention. He found out there was a lot of it. And now he started his own food ministry, and he's got about 40 or 50 families that he's, he's mm-hmm. uh, providing food to mm-hmm. on a monthly basis. But that's how it works. Somebody who's motivated, who, who sees the tragedy and feels like they can do something about it, goes out and does something about right. it. And, and those are the people that we get to empower. And... Uh, they serve an awful lot. There's an awful lot of elderly people that need that kind of help. There's a senior citizen center in downtown McMinnville, two of them across from each other, and, and they're just full of people who, who are desperate for food and company. Right. And right. so, uh, and, and so when, when Diana goes in there with, with food, they're all waiting in line for her, and she knows their stories, and she gives them their donuts and gives them, gives them the coffee cakes and the things that she brings to them. But, but uh, there's a lot that goes into this. There's a lot of heart and a lot of emotion that happens in getting people food because food is not all they need. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it is a universal gateway. It allows somebody to, uh, to to open their heart if somebody brings them food. I think there's there's a tremendous amount of power in a loaf of bread mm. that, that if you're in a, a time of struggle and somebody brings, a neighbor brings you a loaf of bread just because they know you need help, there's, mm. that touches you. It does. Yeah, it definitely does. Wow. And so I get to work with, with hundreds and hundreds of people who have that kind of heart and who want to do that kind of thing. And those are the people that that will be the conduits from from this event, from the money that we raise with this event and the food that we take in in our warehouse. When we push it out, it's these people taking it to, to the people that I've described. Right. Neighbors helping neighbors. That's amazing. Exactly. Yep, for Eliminate, sure. Eliminating hunger is one of your mantras, isn't it? Well, that's it. I, I, I firmly believe that we won't have a problem with hunger in our communities if we just refuse to allow our neighbors to go hungry. Right. Tom, obviously, this this show tonight is about you. I mean, we want to encourage all the listeners uh, and viewers, since we can watch this on a podcast, to, to come to the event or at least send in, you know, can you, first of all, share your website? Yeah, and, well, there's uh, so many people out there, I think, that want to make a difference and just don't know how. And it does start with a donation. So if it's if you feel out of the kindness of your heart, you're, you're wanting to donate, uh, we would love for you to do that. Again, $100 creates 1,000 to 1,200 uh, meals, which is quite amazing. Um, and so the email that you can follow or go to is feedamericafirst with com. That's feedamericafirst first with com, or you can go simply to fafwca.com that's fafwca.com and that'll go to the page that we're collecting all the donations mm-hmm. for uh, for for the event and for feed america first every dollar is a vote so every dollar this, is, this is the this is the goal here is to help carry Ann win and you do that by voting you do that by sending every dollar every hundred dollars is a hundred votes every thousand dollars guess how many votes ten thousand dollars is Ooh, check that out <laughs> but you know you know i think feel like meals, that <laughs> yeah, just by you know <clears throat> being able to help one person is a win um and you know i, I am a winner of uh, and right. i i never go into anything without um without winning but at the end of the day we are making a difference and we're definitely winning and helping this great organization uh feed america first so um, please definitely go to fafwca.com and vote there, donate there if you can. We're just so grateful and and thankful for for your donations. You also can buy a ticket there, or if you yeah, have at any our, at mm-hmm. our website at feedamericafirst.com. There's uh, there's a whole section of pages devoted to dancing with the Nashville stars, and and uh, you can you can make donations, you can learn about us, you can buy tickets through the uh, through the website. We'd we'd love to see you there. Absolutely, and also for those folks that own businesses that are are um, listening and are. Um, our valid listeners out there, we'd love for you to go to that same site, um, fafwca.com, and there's some sponsorship opportunities there as well that we can help uh, fill uh, with your help. So 
Yeah, on the uh, on the website, there's a sponsorship page. We're we're proud to say that our two title sponsors have been uh, have been sold out. But there's a number of other sponsor opportunities that involve that that include a table at the event. So uh, wonderful. So we uh, expect to be sold out in the next two to three weeks. So I would encourage uh, acting now rather than later. Yes, and absolutely. I promise. I promise everybody this is a this is a great evening, Tom. You know it. I mean, it's an amazing cause, but it's actually really a fun evening. The food is amazing. Every every year I've been there, the food has been awesome. Oh, South Fork Catering does a wonderful job. Oh, they do. They do an incredible job, and just it's just a, such a fun evening. And thank you so much again for putting this on. And Carrie Ann, I'm going to so, be even, you know, I'm as so proud fun of, or even I'm a word. So proud I'm of you. just going to be even funner <laughs> this, this time go around. And we get to see the change of outfit and all this. Hey, I mean, yeah. tell me more of that. Don't tell my secrets. Don't tell my secrets. <laughs> it's going to be so cool. I cannot yeah. wait. I mean, I, you know, I'm thinking, would I, would I be penalized, Tom, if I wore my uh, my white leisure suit? Just lose, lose leisure suit. <laughs> People might get scared. Like, I, I, I think we'd just keep a spotlight on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we might have you get up and see if you remember your dances. No, you know? I, I don't. I, I'll just it's so funny. I laugh them. because you know the Jake is going to teach me multiple dances, and it's actually not the dances that I'm going to be dancing in the dance. But really? he wants me to be very well rounded. I'm like, I got a lot of. There's no for time that. to be rounded. I'm like, I got a lot of time for that there. But he says you want to be prepared. You might go to another charity event or at a wedding. I was like, I've been fun. I'm 43. I've been at every wedding. I have not had a problem at the, my dancing at every wedding I've been to. You know, it's fun. That is so, so cool. That it is really. So cool. He's a lot of fun, so I um, I thank Jake for for dealing with me and all the craziness that I provide. But Tom, L- so let's, much, let's yeah. remind everybody how they get a hold of yes. this amazing uh, organization. Uh, FeedAmericaFirst dot com is our our web address, and it has all the information about uh, about the event and about uh, about what we do and how we do it. Absolutely. If, uh, if that doesn't work, call me. FeedAmericaFirst.com. Yes, and if you would like to donate and get your tickets, go to FAFWCA.com. That's FAFWCA.com. Come out for a fun come evening. Vote. Come vote for come Carrie vote, Ann. Come vote. vote I need your Carrie votes Ann. for sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much again, Tom. This is a great my evening uh, with you and Monty. Always good to see you, my friend. See you. Hey, so we're going to see you next week, Friday. Maybe not. How about Sunday? What Sunday. day are we on? Sunday. We're on Sundays at 5 p.m. Get that right. I was getting excited about my dance moves. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'll be dancing Friday uh, on my practice. Hey, thank you so much again. You've been listening to the talk of Music City Real Estate.